Hi, my name is Tim Middleton. I'm a member of the Oracle Coherence Development Team. Welcome to our first screencast in a series talking about the new Managed Coherence Service functionality available in WebLogic Server. Today we will have a quick overview of what Managed Coherence Service are, including the motivation behind the new features, the benefits as well as some of the key architectural components. We will then finish off the screencast with a demonstration. Before we start this presentation, I'd like to cover a slide on WebLogic Server terminology. This will help us understand some concepts and how they relate to Managed Coherence Service. A domain is a group of instances and clusters under unified control. We typically use this to separate our development, testing and production environments, or if we have larger applications, we may separate them via the applications such as finance or HR. An administration server is a central configuration controller for a single domain. A managed server is an instance that hosts applications and required resources. It's effectively an instance of a JVM to which we deploy our applications. A cluster is a group of managed servers which provide increased scalability and reliability. We are also able to deploy an application directly to a cluster and it will be deployed to all managed servers in that cluster. Node Manager is a per-machine process used to start, stop and auto-restart instances. Coherence applications have traditionally been deployed as a JAR, incorporated into a Java application such as a WAR or EA, or a standalone Java application. Typically there are usually two roles within a coherence application. Servers which hold cache data and perform server processing, and clients that do not hold data but perform data operations. Servers are usually started by running a Java class called Default Cache Server, using scripts and specifying an array of JVM arguments to configure an instance. There are a number of challenges with this approach. The life cycle of these artifacts are usually managed separately from the Java EE artifacts by custom shell scripts, utilities, and not by WebLogic Server. This can make the development, deployment, and management of these type of applications more difficult. There's also no standard way to deploy and manage coherence across different platforms and environments. Every customer has no option but to reinvent the wheel. This is where managed coherence servers can help. They provide a tight integration between WebLogic Server and Coherence. This results in a simplified and streamlined development, deployment and management environment for Coherence-based applications. It also introduces the concept of a grid archive or GAR file. These files follow the Java E model and consolidate the dependent artifacts required for the operation of a Coherence-based application. GARs provide automatic application isolation which has had to be manually hand-coded in the past, and lifecycle events around the deployment and undeployment of GAR files. Managed coherent servers leverage the existing WebLogic server infrastructure components, such as WebLogic server clusters, managed servers, and node manager, for defining the structure and architecture of coherence-based applications. Tools such as a config wizard, admin console, and Web WST, or WebLogic scripting language, can be used for deployment, management, and monitoring of these applications in the same way as we do with standard WebLogic server applications. It is important to note that Coherence is still available to be run standalone. By using default case server, you can run your GAR files directly without the WebLogic server container. Managed Coherence servers provide a number of benefits to Coherence users. Firstly, simplified operations management. You can now configure, manage, and deploy coherence using standard WebLogic tools such as the Admin Console, WST, and the Config Wizard. This, in turn, allows you to manage your coherence resources centrally. There's also type Maven integration available, which I'll talk about in a future screencast. Through some new WebLogic server functionality, you have the ability to carry out rolling restarts or rolling redeploys across a WebLogic server cluster. It also continues our efforts to help separate operational configuration for example, the cluster topology, from cache configuration, such as defining individual caches and services. The benefits are much more flexible and more manageable environment. Secondly, a simplified development and deployment. As mentioned before, the GAR file manages all the required artifacts for running coherence applications. This file can be deployed across the WebLogic server environment, taking advantage of WebLogic constructs, such as WebLogic clusters, which helps us to minimize and simplify configuration and deployment. For example, when you deploy a GAR file to a WebLogic server cluster, it will be deployed automatically to all managed servers in that cluster. They are based on industry standard Java EE and therefore can be managed and packaged in a similar way to those artifacts. GAR files provide automatic application isolation. 
What this means is that two different GAR files deployed to a managed server or WebLogic server cluster will automatically have the caches in them isolated from each other. This makes development and management of applications much easier. There's also some additional tooling available in Oracle's Enterprise Pack for Eclipse to support GAR files, which I'll outline in a separate screencast. Finally, managed coherent servers make it much easier to build WebLogic server-based applications that leverage coherence. Let's now have a look at some of the architectural components. So, what is a grid archive file that we've been talking about? A GAR file is a file which contains the coherence and dependent artifacts required for the operation of a coherence-based application. So, the structure is below. We have what we call our GAR deployment descriptor file, which I'll explain on the next page. We have a cache configuration file which defines the caches and services we want to provide, a POF configuration file for our portable object format configuration, any classes required by the coherence application, these may be things like entry processes, uh, you plan on Java objects, aggregators and any business logic, and any other external supporting libraries. So the GAR deployment descriptor file contains the following, it contains a pointer to this cache configuration file. We have an override property which allows us to override that at the managed server or the WebLogic server level. We also have a pointer to our POF configuration file we want to use. And an optional implementation of what we call a lifecycle listener. This is for pre and post start and stop processing. So we can carry out some processing before we start our services or after the services are started on each particular node. And an optional implementation of the configurable cache factory. GAR modules can be deployed to a managed server in a number of ways to support your coherence applications. Firstly, they can be deployed as standalone. So in this example here, myapp1.gar and myapp2.gar are two different GAR files. Even if they have the same caches in them, they will be automatically isolated from each other. You can embed a GAR file in an EAR file. And what this means is that all the resources and the classes within the GAR file are automatically made available to any resources or applications within the ear. So in this example, the web application and the EJB application. We can also deploy a GAR file as a shared library and then reference that in our application deployment and it'll be made available to the components in the ear file. Now I'm going to take you through a demonstration of this functionality. I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the creation of the managed coherent servers using the WebLogic Server Admin Console. We could just as well do this using the uh, config wizard or through WLST. In this example, I've got an existing domain called base domain, which I'm going to create a number of components. I'm going to create two WebLogic clusters, a data tier and an app tier, and add managed service to those clusters. I'm then going to associate those clusters directly with a coherence cluster. Then I'll deploy my GAR file to the data tier cluster and my E file, which contains a WAR file, to the web app cluster. The first thing I'm going to do is create a coherence cluster. So I do that via the coherence cluster option here. I can also do this via WST or via the config wizard. So I'll specify a name and I can specify I wanted to use a custom cluster configuration file. That's the Tangosol coherence override file. I then set some basic information about the cluster, including clustering mode, unicast, listen ports, etc. At this stage, I'm not going to assign to any managed service because I haven't built my infrastructure yet. So now I've created my coherence cluster. You can see here there's more information we can go into to define the coherence cluster, including security, well-known addresses, address providers, and so on. At this stage, I'm going to leave it as it is. So I've created my coherence cluster definition. I'm now going to create two WebLogic server clusters. The motivation behind creating a WebLogic server clusters is to logically group the coherence managed service into responsibilities by the association to a WebLogic cluster. I'm going to call one of them the data WS cluster, and this is going to hold my storage enabled servers. So that's a WS cluster created. I want to go in there and associate it with the newly created coherence cluster. And by default, storage enabled is true, and that's what we want for our data tier. So let's create our second cluster, which is going to be our app tier cluster. 
app WS cluster. But this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this as storage disabled. So again, I associate it with my coherence cluster. Save. But I'm going to change it from storage enabled to storage disabled. Now I'm going to create my managed servers. So the first one I'm going to create is called kserver1. And I'm going to associate that with the weblogic cluster data WS cluster. So by associating with that cluster, it's automatically associated with the coherence cluster. Now what I'll do is I'll configure the machine so we can start it with node manager. And then I will clone that for high availability. Okay, server two, make that 7003. So now I've got my two case servers. I'm then going to create my, my menu service for my app tier. This time I'll make it a member of the app WS cluster. And again, because it's a member of the app WS cluster, then it will automatically be associated with the coherence cluster. And again, I will just set the machine so we can control it by node manager. And I will clone this for high availability as well. Call it app server to change the listen port. Okay, so what I've done now, I've got my coherence cluster defined. I have my two WebLogic clusters, which are a part of that coherence cluster. The two WebLogic clusters have the servers associated with them, so implicitly they are associated with the coherence cluster. So let's start them. While they're starting, let's have a look at the grid archive file and the EAR file we're going to deploy. In the next screencast, I will show you how we created those through the Enterprise Pack for Eclipse and Maven. So we have our example GAR. So if I look at the contents of that, we can see our coherence application docs at XML, our cache configuration, our POF configuration, some classes, and our lifecycle reactor class. Then if we have a look at our example ear file, which we're going to deploy to the app cluster, it has the GAR file plus my WAR file, which is the application. So let's see if they're started. So what we're going to do now is deploy our application. But before we do that, let's go across to JConsole. We've connected through to the domain runtime mbean server, and we can see within here the coherence mbeans, and we can see that at the moment the four managed servers have the management servers running, which effectively means they're joined together as a coherence cluster. So what we're going to do now is deploy our application. Firstly, what we're going to do is deploy our GAR file. So in this case, we're going to deploy our GAR file to our data WLS cluster. So this is storage enabled, so this is going to hold our data. So if we flip over to JConsole while that's deploying, we'll see the service is updated once it's deployed. So now we can see that case server 1 and case server 2 now have an additional service called example gar partition pof cache. We mentioned about cache isolation and we can see here that the service names are prefixed with the gar application. So if we go back here and have a look in the deployments we can now see we have example gar which is deployed as a coherence archive and deployed to the data WS cluster and therefore deployed to all managed servers of that cluster. Let's now deploy our ear file. Remember the ear file contains the web application plus the grid archive file as well. So example ear file. In this case, we're going to deploy it 
to the app WS cluster, so our storage disabled cluster. So if we come back to J console while that's deploying, we'll then see that the app server one and app server two now have the same service running. So we can see that the example gar partition pof cache service is running across all the managed servers. So the storage disabled service and the storage enabled service. We expand this deployment. We can see the different components. It's an ear file. It contains example web app, which is a web application, and example gar, which is a coherence archive. So all the components in the gar file are available to the example web app. When we run this application, which is included as a sample in the WebLogic server distribution, we can see that we now have case size of zero, total cluster size is four, and we have two storage enabled members. This application allows us to insert, update, and delete information into a coherence cache. Now I can insert 20 random contacts, and I'll insert another 20, which means we have 40 contacts. Now let's go over to J console where we can see that a new node has opened up. So the cache node shows us the cache service and it also shows us the storage enabled members that are storing data on behalf of that service. And we can see there's node 1 and node 2. And if you look at the attributes, we can see there's 16 entries stored on node 1 and there's 24 on node 2 which is 40 entries. So we can see the information that's been entered in the application is now stored within the coherence cluster. From this demonstration, you can see how easy it was to create my coherence infrastructure within WebLogic. I was then able to deploy to my environment using standard WebLogic tools and run my application. All of what I've demonstrated could have been done using WST as well. The configuration wizard also has the ability to create the coherence and WebLogic infrastructure required to support a multi-tiered coherence application. Thank you for your time.